Good morning, Jules fans, and welcome back to Jules in the Blood TV, Monday review time. Um, three Saturday wins on the bounce to talk about. Everyone's smiling, sun's still out. Um, it's not been a bad weekend, to be fair. Um, we're going to start with a paper review. We've got quite a few to look at this morning. Um, then we'll have a little little look back, obviously, on our thoughts on, on the game on Saturday, the 90 minutes. Um, that mental, mental ending. Um, and then we'll have a look forward to tomorrow night as we host Bolton Wanderers. Um, we'll start with um, yesterday's papers. Um, the Sun, great headline. Right spot on and on and on. Josh hits nine minute pen treble. Sadly, they ruined themselves because they put a picture of the wrong game and had a picture from the South End penalty. And they also compounded that error, unfortunately, with a stat regarding Gillingham have now won two league games on the bounce for the first time since beating South End and Bury in the first two fixtures of the season. Incorrect. We beat Northampton and Walsall back to back league games in November, didn't we? But anyway, small gripe. Um, doesn't detract the fact from the way that um, we won the game. Um, what else did we have? We had Sunday's edition of the Football League paper. Uh, looking at their player ratings, I'm not sure they turned up until about the 75th minute. They gave a Chris Erd a seven. I'm not getting into it anymore because I had a little row with someone on Twitter yesterday regarding his performance. But um, the main headline, Josh spot on in a thriller. Obviously, another one related to Josh Wright and all his penalties. Um, Daily Mirror today, Josh spots a hat-trick. Um, Josh Wright insisted timing was the key after becoming the first player in 67 years to score a hat-trick of penalties in one of England's top four divisions. Um, the spot picks came in a frantic nine-minute spell as Gillingham recovered from 2-0 down to win 3-2. And then obviously, um, closer to home, Amy Pennock still erring on the side of caution. We're not safe yet. I uh, must admit, love that picture, Boz. Absolutely brilliant. I think that captures it all, doesn't it? Players off on off to celebrate. Jules fans jumping around in a rain of men. For me, it was one of the best atmospheres in the rain of men that last 15 minutes um, for quite a while. Um, and we was just talking off air, weren't we, about um, sort of late winners and our favourites. Yeah, there's, there's a few that stick out. Um, obviously, that was quite good. We, I mentioned Cody <laughs> McDonald a couple of seasons ago under Taylor when we'd not won at home for two months and we, I think we scored... That was last minute from a corner, I think, after yeah, Michael Doughty had been it. sent off. That's it, yeah. Um, I think Cody done it a couple of months later as well on Sky um, when we played Wolves, I think. I think it was the season it was the before, season. wasn't it? Or was it the season, it was the season before? before, yeah. That's up there as well. Yeah, that was very late, late. And Wolves were running away with League One yeah. at the time, weren't they? Um, going back a bit further, I think we mentioned uh, Gavin Tomlin. Against Hereford. 5-4 yeah. in about 2011. I think mean, he nearly had a heart attack on the touchline that day. A bit like you Saturday. <laughs> <laughs> um... And then obviously going even further about this couple that um, Simeon Jackson, Wembley, um, from and the goal. Daniel was reminded of that on Saturday as well. Yeah, he got a little bit of yeah. stick, didn't he? Um, and it was a goal kick. <laughs> <laughs> um, even further back, for me, obviously, Andy Thompson was late at, at Wembley against Wigan in 2000. That was great. Um, but my first one, I think, I don't know if this was before your time, 2002 you started going, didn't you? Yeah. So 99, um, so I'm slightly older than Buzz, wouldn't believe it, would you? Um, Jules 2, Bournemouth 1. Incredible to think now they're in the Premier League. But yeah, that was the first time Jules were live on the telly, I believe. Um, and we, again, similar to Saturday, we'd sort of been outplayed for about an hour. And then... Um, Hesse smashed one in the top corner with the aid of a deflection. And then Kevin Lisby, in about the second minute of injury or something, um, slid one in from a John Hodge cross. Um, I know my mate lost his Gillingham shirt in the ensuing melee in the old Rainham end, which I thought was going to collapse. Um, but yeah, so there's been plenty down the years. And obviously you lot all have your, old fa your own favourites as well. So perhaps tweet us them and we can retweet the best ones. Um, anyway, um, the rest of the paper... Record-breaking comeback, cracking picture of Josh there with the match ball. Um, great to see. Although apparently he had to go and search for you, so didn't he? You thought he got booted yeah, over the corner road or somewhere, but yeah, he's, he's it looks like out. he's got it now. Some great action shots. Um, right wins mental battle. Um, he stated in a couple of the papers that he was quite pleased that all three penalties were quite close together, so he didn't really have a lot of time to think about it too much. Um, Pennock thrilled by a special finale. Um, 
And then there's just a couple of little bits. Bradley Garmston's gone to the Far East um, in an attempt to cure these horrible hamstring problems. So fingers crossed we can get him. Don't know a better diagnosis or some better treatment or whatever to get him to get him fit as soon as possible. But I'm still of the opinion that I think we write him off for the rest of the season and let's try and get him fit for pre-season. Um, and one that we touched on um, on Friday in the um, match preview, uh, Joe Quigley being called up to Republic of Ireland's under-21 side, which is great for him. Um, anyway, uh, let's have a let's have a talk now about the game itself. Um, obviously, the ending was mental. Um, I think we all sort of was riding along on the crest of a wave, so to speak, of emotion and just unbridled, nutty, crazy, unexpected joy, weren't we? But I think what we have to do now, two days after, is I think we have to assess the first 75 minutes. Um, average? I think average is flattering them, to be honest. It was very flat. It was very... There was the amount of times people were shouting, talk to each other, there's two players going for the same ball, there was yeah. no communication, short passes were going astray, it was, it was really, really poor, for the first 75 minutes. And so, yeah, and I think it looked like you could tell that they were still, regardless of their poor run of form, they looked a team that was in the top, not sort of top they, five. They had their moments, definitely going forward, at, at um, the back you could see towards the end as we were throwing it out and they were just... We even said at the beginning, I think, that they looked... Edgy at the back, even at like yeah. one nil, because obviously nil nil didn't last that long, unfortunately. But we kept saying, even at half time, we're still in the game. Yeah, we said, yeah, if we got the next goal, we'd have gone but on. But we one. just, um, we just never really, could. again, I think we, how many times did we say, if we had a proper shot? I... Well, we didn't, did we? There was that header off the line, I think. I'm trying to, think. yeah, we had one in the first half, right down the other end, which we couldn't see, probably looked like it was cleared off the line. And then there was the one that Josh Wright hit, and it's. <coughs> And it came back out to Amar, yeah. and then it was Anne Ball, and that looked definitely like Anne Ball because on the highlights, the geezer's hands like up there. Um, but aside from that, there might have been one more flick header that then drifted out for a throw in. I think it was that far wide from a back yeah, free kick, but that was Aymar about it. Raymond, one of them, yeah. And then second half, all I can remember is I think we, we caught like it on the match day point. live. Raymond nearly scored right at the beginning. Ducky whipped yeah, one in, and he sort of bounced off his shin and sort of nearly landed on the roof and net the keeper caught it. But after that, I can't... Oh, Deji smashed one out of the rain end. That's probably Raymond, still I still can. orbiting <laughs> the world. Um, but that was it. I don't remember Cody. Cody got through first half, but never got his shot away. No, and looking brilliant. at the highlights, it was an absolutely superb tackle. It was, it was, tackle. Tackle. It was absolutely tackle, brilliant. Yeah. Um, but aside from that, I can't remember a striker having a shot. It wasn't just strikes, it's anyone. It's just so, so poor. So many over it crosses. Stuart Nelson. Let's talk about Stuart Nelson. Because obviously, I've already mentioned... Um, a couple of times that, and other people have, and he, I think he's been very, very good, especially since Aidy's come in. But I think since that horrible first month he had, I think generally since he's seen off Jonathan Bond, um, I think he's been very, very good, and he's made plenty of very good saves. I mean, you look at Berry last week; yeah. we probably wouldn't have got anything out of that game if it wasn't for Stuart Nelson. We had a couple of very good ones get South End too. I yeah, right. um, but Saturday. People going on about he's made worldies. I don't remember him making any worldies. I remember him making yes. a save from Padden, uh, Padden, 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 Paddy Madden first half when he stood up and Madden's gone slightly wide, but you'd expect him to make it, correct? Yeah. And then I think he's made a one on one second half as well. Yeah, I think it might have been Hoffa. But but at the same time, if you if you're classing them as worldies, then the two he's conceded are some shockers, league. absolute shockers. If you're going to go middle ground, I've praised the guy since day one, but. But he does have these moments, and the second one looks worse every time you see it. I think it. we've said off air, let's like we just put it down to the fact that he really, 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 really seems to like Scunthorpe this season because he chucked two in his own net in the away fixture and he's been nutmegged twice. He's probably glad to see the back of him. From honest. a combined distance of about 35 yards at the weekend. But, but the first one, when it, when it comes to him, I said, you, he should save it. I'd never for a yeah. second thought that was going in. We said it half time. It wasn't, it wasn't like Madden's on the six yard line or close. He's got 12 yards to react, and Madden's right. almost scuffed it. Um, Maybe that done him. That's the only thing Maybe. I think. Maybe he thought Manon was going to absolutely clump it in the bottom corner or something. I'm, I'm so not, every time I see the second one, I'm not really sure what he's trying to do. He looks like he's like just, feet, right? he's just jumped over it. He looks like he's just jumped, literally jumped out of the way, which is obviously he's not, but that's how bad he <coughs> looks. Um, the other one for me, um, Chris Erd. And I got into a bit oh, of I, you know, first a heated debate I on Twitter. I used a few, uh, 
few descriptions of him in the first half, I must say. But there was people telling me, one person in particular yesterday on Twitter was trying to tell me that he was part of the planned first half that stopped, and I think he called it, a Scunthorpe runaway train. Well, I, cannot, I don't remember seeing a train. For me, and I'm not being horrible, the only thing that resembled a train was the size of Chris Hurd. Which, which he was John a couple of minutes, he looked so, this, so unfit. He was massive, absolutely massive. A stone overweight for me, at least, and that's. And I'm not. I don't. You know me. I don't dig people out for the sake of it, and I'm not saying these things just to be horrible. Because I've always tried to back it up with. And we've pra- we praised him a lot. Before at the Saturday, beginning, but before Saturday, and we said it again on the match day live. Thirteen games he'd started or featured in before Saturday. We haven't won any of them. What What gets me is when you get people on Twitter trying to defend him and saying he's made a couple of brilliant tackles. Yeah, fair play. He made one good tackle. There's one in the first half which he didn't even jump. The guy just spun him, didn't even react. And the good tackle comes because he misses the first header and then gets muscled off the ball by yeah, he's, he's a bloke half his size. Yeah, because he weren't fit. And I think, which has frustrated me a little bit, we've just looked at on air, uh, off air, sorry, AD Pennock's mentioned in the Midway Messenger, fair play to Chris Erd. At the moment, he's struggling with his knee, and every time, what was it, he twists or slides, he gets yeah, pain in it. Yeah, keep putting him in every time past the fitness test. So, why are we playing him? He's overweight, he's not fit because the manager's admitted it. He's very uh, handsy, I don't, his I don't, arms are flying everywhere all the time. And he was, yeah, and he was getting caught out, and we said at the time, I know we all berated Tom Hopper in the ground, because again, you get caught up in the emotion and the, the moment. But there was, I think we saw tweets at half-time from people in the Golden Road sand so who said he'd, lo- he'd left an elbow in. Um, and then he then didn't learn. A couple of minutes later, we were saying again, he's throwing his arms around. Smashed it in a mad- Madden, didn't he? One of them. It weren't a, a point, but it was a yellow card. So there's a case that he could have been sent off. Well, I said to um, you at half time, if he comes back out, I think I said the match so long, if he comes back out, he's getting sent off. Yeah. Should have red card away. Thankfully, he didn't. And again, to back up the point about this 13 game winless run, the second half, I know we were average still. See, I said this but to you after We the won game. that half 3 yeah. 1 without him on. I wouldn't so. count that as a win just because he's played. Because he had an absolute, he for me, had absolutely nothing to do with the, to, of anything good that we done. And I'm not saying anyone else was brilliant. And obviously, no, no, I know the ratings cool. get sort of distorted a little bit because of the, <coughs> mad, the mad ending. But it was it's one of the worst centre half performances I've seen this season. People's and right, we've been people bad. This Jackson season. a few weeks back, yeah. but Jackson wasn't as bad as that. But I, I just, but again, I, I, this this again, like I say, this little discussion I call it I had yesterday. I was being accused of being personal and uncon- but like I said at the time to the fella stop being so precious about it again it comes back to the incident I had with another player back in the autumn they're all happy to retweet and favourite everything yeah, and like it and talk around, to yeah. us when, when we say oh he was brilliant he smashed one in the top corner he's had a worldie you have to, surely you have to take it both ways but they, anyway, know, they know the profession they're in don't they let's not get too miserable <laughs> um, that last 15 minutes Crazy. I, was, I said to you I've at the end, I've seen some mental stuff in that place, but that was unbelievable. It would have been mad enough if we come back and won 3 2 in under any yeah. sort of normal, like if we just scored three. But three penalties was mental. The, the fact that we got them all in nine minutes made it even more crazy. You were laughing, I think, when the third I one. I didn't was know what was going on. Oh. I literally I lost the plot. I lost the plot completely. It was just, I was thinking, it's, it was all surreal, I think. Um, You've seen the reactions on Twitter on various match day lives, match day experiences, not just ours. Obviously, the Jill's blog do a great one. Um, there's another one out there now. I'm going to give him a little big up as well, which is Lewis Browning, who did, I think they're called, what is it, White Lines Football? White I've Lines, looked at yeah. his. His was, his was decent as well. Poor lad got punched and broke his glasses after the third goal, so fair play. Um, the emotion was why we all love football. And if again, it comes back to this, like us when we was watching the Barcelona game last week, if people turn around to you and say, and it's normally other halves and people that don't like sport. It's just a game. Just show them stuff like that because it is absolutely brilliant. You cannot get any better emotion than that anywhere for me. And, and I've had kids. And, and that's, I mean, they're right out there having children is, is some of the best moments in my life, obviously. But there's something about this game that just, it keeps well, drawing you in, doesn't it? And just... we've been bad this season, let's be honest, but it just keeps drawing you in. And magical moments like that are the reason we keep going back. Um, yeah, I think that summed it up, to be honest. Um, right, we shall have a look forward to tomorrow. Bolton Wanderers come to the Priestfield Stadium.
A quick late addition to today's vlog piece. We've been lucky enough to track down a Bolton fan, a Pete O'Neill, massive fan of them. Um, and he's agreed to give us his views on tomorrow's fixture. Um, a short piece on who he perceives to be their key men, their danger men, and um, obviously a little score prediction. So I will leave you in his capable hands now. Um, thank you, buddy. Much appreciated um, you getting involved. If you want to follow him on Twitter, he can be found at Lee underscore Wigan. But that is Lee, L-E-I-G-H, not L double E. Uh, cheers, Pete, for your input. Thank you very much. Quick preview of our visit to Gillingham tomorrow night. Uh, first time I've ever been down there, so I'm looking forward to that. It uh, should be a great game. Two teams absolutely flying, especially for the weekend. Uh, two good results. So should be should be both teams on high on confidence. Uh, in terms of ourselves, key players, look, Beavers and Weeter at the back been solid, but chipped in with quite a few goals as well. Some spectacular ones, um, so they've been awesome. Midfield, they've been mainly sparing. Vela, um, they've been a big influence in the side. Uh, Pratt came in back in at the weekend and, and did a job as well, so he's been key. Um, Medine up top, can't can't fault the way he's working, working hard, getting stuck in. Uh, he's split Bolton fans a little bit over the last few season and a bit, but I think he's winning quite a few rounds now. Um, in terms of danger men, Maurice um, his assists recently. I think he's eight eight assists in six games or something like that. Um, and he you know he's working hard, gets back as well helps out defensively. So he's looking like a, a player that that could. You know, could be key for us if we want to go up. And then Lafondra got two goals at the weekend. Um, so hopefully that'll be him now on a run. He'll get a, go on a run and get quite a few, quite a few goals. Um, in terms of it, I think it'll be tight, tight game. Uh, I think we might just sneak it two one. Um, uh, maybe set piece or something. I don't think there'll be much in it though, because it'll be a be a club. Obviously. Um... They had a very good weekend, didn't they, as well as us. Um, they ended Fleetwood's, what was it, 18, 17 yeah, or 18 game unbeaten yeah. run. and um, So to go to to go to go there and do it as well is a very good performance. Convincing me as well. Yeah, scored four. Um, and we just had a look. We think a couple of their centre-halves scored. Wheater and Beavers, uh, we think. Yeah. Obviously, Adam Lafondra's come in there recently as well. He's a massive threat at this level. Um, they lost, obviously, they lost... Zach Clough to Forrest, a few obviously in the window. Um, and Sammy Amiovi, he ripped us apart, didn't he? Yeah, so there's two there if you want to look for, for positives um, from the disaster when we went up there in, in December. Um, Sammy Amiobi and Zach Clough, who both pulled the strings that night, along with Josh Vedder, I think was very good that evening as well. Um, so there's two there that can't play, but obviously they've still got plenty of threats. Um, defensively, they're huge, aren't they? they all I think we dogs. just looked at what they play. They, it looks like they might line up similarly to us. Um, this three-five-two or five-three-two or three-four-one-two, whatever you want to call it. Um, so we're thinking they're probably going to play Wheater, Beavers, and Devite. Yeah. Looks like so they're three huge centre backs. Um, but then looking at ours, we said Joe Quigley looks out on his feet at the moment. So we said we'd probably like take him out. Break. But you might need him to compete with them three. Um, anyway, enough about us at the moment. Um, Form-wise, uh, last six, they've won two, drawn three and lost one in League One. So obviously that's nine points from 18. Uh, ours is 10 points from 18, I believe. We've won three, drawn one and lost two. Obviously a massive boast, uh, boast boost was that we've claimed back-to-back -back league wins for the first time since November. Um, it's the first time that 80's done it, which is great. Um, their away form, Saturday aside, is a little bit patchy. Um, I think their last six away, um, they've drawn three and lost two. So Fleetwood is their only away win in the last six. They've scored 10 and conceded 10. But obviously you have to take into the fact that they scored four of them at the weekend. Yeah. So it's only six in their other five. And, and they've conceded, conceded a few as well. Yeah. Um, we know we're going to score and we know we're going to concede, so that's a given. Yeah, yeah you'd say so. We, we, if we defend like we did for the first, well... <laughs> 180 seconds <laughs> that's how bad it was on Saturday um, they're going to cause us huge problems um, <coughs> in terms of 
we've already touched on their plans, I think, um, even though Zach Clough's gone and Amy Obi's been recalled yeah, by Newcastle. Right uh, Adam LaFondra, we've already mentioned. Uh, Josh Vella. Um, Gary Medina be a handful. We seemingly can't play against that type of centre forward. No. We struggle with it. He's going to be back to goal, digging out centre backs, whether we can cope. Hopefully, Raymond can help that in terms of he didn't play in the, the reserve, uh, reverse fixture. Um, but we're playing well. Or we're getting good oh, results. We're getting a rub of the green at the moment. So we're getting good results, yeah. So um, I think apart from Oxford, we haven't lost at home since end Oldham, of September, yeah, yeah. beginning of October when Oldham turned us over and they were rubbish then. Um, team. Well, we've done our predicted team, haven't we? Heard. We won't know play. Heard won't play and we know Wright Josh won't Wright play. won't play. We've also taken Joe Quigley out. Yeah, I think Joe Quigley needs a rest. I, think I he mean, just needs a he might. He could be an option if we're twenty minutes to go and we need to pinch a goal, either to win it or if we want someone to hold the ball up. But I think, as big as their centre backs are, I think Josh Parker could cause him a problem because he's out and out quick, and you only have to look at his work rate. In, I mean, we caught it on the match day live. That tackle right at the end, oh. um, brilliant, absolutely brilliant. You want that defending from the front. We've said that. We praise Cody McDonald for doing it all the time when he's not scoring. So let's give Josh Parker uh, credit for doing that similar type of thing. Um, so what we're thinking, we're going to go, we said Nelson goal, yeah. move Deji back into where Chris Erd was. So it'd be Deji, Max and Zesh, centre-back. <coughs> yeah. Um, Martin back at left wing back. Get right Martin right. on the left hand side where he calls the. He was more of a threat second half from that side than he was from the right in the first half. For me, he just kept running into trouble first half. Yeah, he's uh, he's not a quickest, but he can certainly cross he's the got, ball. He's out got, he's got, he's, yeah, he's got really right. cracking feet as well. Um, so we go Lee Martin from the left. Yeah. Manuel Sadebi from the right. Yeah. Mark Byrne keeps his place. Uh, we think, we think it might be Jake Kessenthaler because he came on at the weekend. It doesn't seem that Muldoon's going to start. And then up front, we'll have Cody and Josh Parker with Daki in behind. In terms of a bench, we had a quick look. Struggling. Holy will still be on there, I think. Mitchell Dickinson, Oliver Muldoon, Elliot List. And then we put Quigley on there because we swapped in with Josh Parker. So let's like, we can get maybe Ryan Jackson, who I think is due a fitness test, and hopefully Scott Wagstaff back on the bench. That'll give us some options. If not, it could be two or three from people like, what did we say, Noah and Bo. Noah and Bo, Old Acre and Cundall, we went to. Greg Cundall, yeah. Or, I mean, I, we said over the weekend that Bradley Stevenson's been offered a pro contract, so it's going to be youngsters again if them two don't make it. Um, yeah, I think that sums up. I think it's going to be an open game. I think at, they'll come and attack. It's going to be a chance at both ends, I think. And in terms of predictions... You go first. I normally I always go for it on a Monday. 1-1. One, one. I'm going to go 2-2. Two, two. If we had Josh in his form, I'd, think I'd go 2-1. That's the I only one. Are, are we going to score a goal? Because yeah. <laughs> uh, Josh Wright's not there. We don't score. Um, what are we going to do if we get a penalty? Um, goal scorers. I'm going to go... Ducky. And... Zesh Raymond. I'll go Dak. There we go. Right, we'll see you all tomorrow for another Match Day Live. I apologise in advance. I cannot see it being as exciting as that ending on Saturday. Um, if it is, oh my God. Um, but until next time, up the Jills. <laughs>